Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these beautiful rainbow hexagon blankets. Even if you're a complete beginner, all you need to do is watch this entire video and have some self-belief sis and you can make a blanket just like this. Before I get too into the video, it would be awesome if you would consider subscribing. I know you don't know who I am yet, but I promise I'm a fun time. So if you subscribe and you hate me, you can always unsubscribe later. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your hexagons, how to attach them, how to sew in your ends, how to choose your colours. So from this video only, from start to finish, you can make one of these blankets. If you already know how to crochet, you might not need to watch the whole video. So you can click the link between me down there and there'll be timestamps for all of your crocheting needs. Hexagon blankets are my favourite thing to crochet because they're easy to make. It doesn't take that much skill to get something that looks really beautiful and really colourful. Even if you just make a few hexagons a day, with a little bit of patience, you'll have a huge blanket that you can be really proud of. These blankets are great for keeping cosy, keeping on your sofa, giving to your friends, um, or just taking them out with you if you go to the beach or to a festival. They make you look like you're really great at crochet, even if you only actually know a couple of stitches. I crocheted this blanket in lockdown when I was super bored and had nothing to do. I went from no crochet skills to a whole blanket in not that much time. So I think that's what you can do too. To make this blanket, you're gonna need a crochet hook. I use a four mil or a 4.5 mil. Whatever size you wanna use is fine. The principle of the blanket stays the same. You're gonna need some scissors, a darning needle and some yarn in all different colors. I use the Stylecraft Special DK. You can use whatever you like. And finally, you're just gonna need some confidence and some patience. So first, I'm going to show you how to make your hexagons. Let's go. So in order to start, I'm just going to show you what we're actually making. So this is a hexagon nice and close up. You have the middle and then you've got a few different layers. And then we have the final layer, which hexagons it off. I like this pattern um, because it gives you a mixture of some roundedness and then some hexagonness. The first thing we're going to do is make the center circle. So that's this part here. I'm going to show you how to make that now. Get your yarn. This is a DK yarn and I have a four millimeter crochet hook. Color choice is really up to yourself. I like a real mixture of all different colors because I love that sort of hippie look on the blanket. But if you want a more sophisticated or professional kind of look, you can select particular colors which give you the sort of look you're after. Personally, I love this rainbowy kind of randomness. So we're gonna make that middle circle that you can see just there. So this is how you do it. Grab your yarn. You want two fingers like this. Take the yarn and go over your fingers like that and then you're going to go back over the fingers like that and you've got an x if you look at the x you can see we've got that side and that side we're going to take the hook and go under the right side and we're going to use the hook to grab the left side and pull it under the right side and then you're going to pull your fingers out and grab the two ends of the yarn and yank down on them and then you're gonna that's the short end you're going to pull on the long end until the hook, the uh, slip knot is on your hook. You can just make a normal slip knot on your fingers, but this is how I do it. The next most important thing about crochet is how you hold your wool. I'm not gonna tell you what everyone else tells you, which is that you should hold it this fancy way, which actually just makes your life hard. Just hold this bit of wool. You don't need it, but it needs to stay long. So just hold it under your fingers, literally however you want. I hold it between my fingers like that. Then you're gonna grab the end of your wool and what we're gonna do now is make a chain. The first part of this is not gonna make any sense. You're just gonna to have to do exactly what I tell you without really understanding what it is that you're actually doing. Once you get the hang of it, then you'll understand. But for the first couple of rounds, you're just basically following the instructions, even though you don't necessarily know exactly what it is that you're actually doing. But I, I promise you what we're doing is just making this middle section. Take your yarn. Yarn over your hook. This is called yarning over. So if I say yarn over, it just means that. You can do it that way if you want, but the best way to do it is take the wool over the back of the hook like that so you get a nice curl. Then you're going to use your hook to take this stitch behind this stitch. So use the hook, pull that stitch underneath that stitch. It feels all a bit weird, but you do get used to it. So that's one. Now we're going to do two three, four, and you're pulling, uh, yarning over and then using the hook to pull this behind this. That's five and we're gonna do six. You can do less than six if you want, but six gives you a nice little hole, which is what I like the look of. It also makes the general crocheting easier, especially when you're learning to have a larger um, chain. So we've chained six. If you look at the bottom of the chain, um, luckily I'm filming in 4K so you can see everything. This here 
if you look right at the bottom of the chain, there's a little V where this is the bottom of the chain. The first stitch is there. You don't have to be too, too, too particular, but what you're basically trying to do is shove your hook through the very base of the chain. There's not really any wrong way to do it because there's only two bits of yarn there. So you can't do it wrong. So trust yourself, push your hook into the bottom of the chain. It is a bit of a push, but once you've done it, um, you'll get used to the feeling. So we've done that. And then we're going to take the wool and yarn over again. And we're going to do what we've just done, which is pull the bit that we've yarned over underneath this stitch. So we'll pull it under like that. And we're going to do the same thing with this stitch. So pull it under like that. So now you have this very fetching hole. And this is going to be the centre hole of your first hexagon. So now you have the hole. It's nice and simple. If you're finding it really hard to make this, just keep watching, keep doing what I've done. Or you can have a look at some other videos on YouTube that also show you how to start. We've got the middle hole. And now we're going to make a chain of three. So we already know how to make a chain because we just made one. So now we're going to do a chain of three. So we're going to yarn over the hook. We're going to use the hook to pull this behind this, and that is called chaining one. So we've chained one, we're going to do it again, yarn over the hook, pull the first loop through the second hoop, that's chaining two. Put the yarn over the hook, pull the first loop but through the second loop, and that's chaining three. So now we have a, center, a central hole, which is this hole here that I'm talking about, the one that my nail is coming through, that's the hole. It's not that little hole at the top. Ignore that, that's just the stitch. What you actually want is this middle hole here. This part's going to feel a bit weird because you're crocheting through the hole, but just trust me, even though it feels like what you're doing is wrong, it's not wrong, so just do it. This stitch is called a double crochet. In England, it's called a treble crochet, but the American uh, naming for the stitches makes a hell of a lot more sense, in my opinion. So we're going to go with the American um, pattern, so it's called a double crochet. So this is how you do a double crochet. Um, that's my short little end. So again, I'm just ignoring him. He's not really relevant. We need him to stay long, but we don't actually need him for the crochet. So I tuck him under there. So there's your hole. There's your chain three. So yarn over your hook. Then what you're going to do is take your hook, which has been yarned over and push it into the middle of that hole. So it looks like that. So now you've yarned over your hook and you've pushed through the hole. You're going to yarn over your hook again. So the yarn is here. We're going to yarn over the hook again. And then we're going to use this yarn to pull back through the central circle. So what you've got here is now three things on your hole. So you've done that. Now you're going to yarn over again. You're going to pull this stitch that you've just made through these two stitches. So you're going to pull through two. That's what that's called. And then you've got two stitches left on your hook. And then you're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through both of those two stitches at the same time. So there's pull through one and pull through two. And that is called double crochet stitch. So what we have here is our central circle, which we made um, right at the beginning. We've got one chain three and one double crochet that we've just made. Effectively, what we've done here is the very central circle, which in the end you won't actually be able to see because it gets crocheted over. And then we have one, two of our little spikes. We need 12 in total, and that chain three counts as one of them. So we've got one, two, and then we're gonna have to do another 10. So it will be in total one chain three, and then 11 of these double crochet stitches. So we've got 10 more to make, so let's do that. I'll do a few with you and then I'll speed it up. So we've done two, we're gonna do another 10. So we're gonna yarn over the hook, push the hook, into the middle of the hole, grab that yarn with your hook, or it's effectively yarning over again. So you're going to put the yarn over the hook and make sure when you pull that hook back through the circle, the hook is got that yarn over it. So we're going to pull back through the circle and then we're going to yarn over the hook again and we're going to pull this stitch back through these first two stitches. So that's called pull through two. So we'll pull through one and pull through two. And then we have two stitches left on the hook and then we're gonna yarn over again and we're gonna pull that stitch we've just yarned over through both of those stitches and that is another double crochet. So you have your chain three, 
double crochet and another double crochet that's three and we need 12 so we're going to do another one so we're going to take the yarn yarn over the hook hopefully by now you're getting the hang of it a little bit yarn over the hook push the hook through the central hole grab the wool with the yarn and pull it back through again and then you've got three on the hook yarn over pull that wool back through the first two stitches so then you end up with two yarn over again and pull the wool back through the final two stitches so you have one so now you have your chain three your other three double crochets so that counts as four spikes so what we're going to do is keep on doing that until we have 12 stitches in total and i'll do that for you right now so i've just finished my 12th double crochet and it looks like this so now you have a cute little hole in the middle and 12 stitches around the outside now if that middle hole is just a little bit too big for your liking what you can do is go to the back take that short edge and just give it a tug and that will tighten up that middle hole for you you don't have to do that or you can not do it and then choose to do it at the end it's up to you i like to give it a little tug because it just tightens up the middle of the hole and gives it a bit more of a cute appearance now what we want to do is close off this circle so we've got our first layer done so if you look here you can see we've got the chain three here is the chain three we made initially here is the double crochet that we made the first and then all 12 uh, in total 12 spikes but we've got one chain and 11 double crochets if you look at the top of this chain here as it goes over to make the next stitch so we've got a little gap there's our chain, there's our first stitch. Here is a little gap. And here, if you look at it that way, you can see you've got one and two little prongs which come off this chain and over the top. And that is where we're gonna attach the uh, circle to itself. What you're gonna do is take the hook and you're gonna use the sharp part of the hook to hook underneath uh, those two little uh, lines so you're trying to hook it under there like that so that's the place that's what you want so you want to have two bits of wool on top of your uh, hook when you try and attach so you push it through there then you're going to yarn over your hook and you're going to pull this piece of yarn through all of these bits of wool so you've got two little bits there and one there you're pulling through both of those so then that will seal up your circle nicely. If you're not sure what I just did, go back and watch it again. Or what you can also do is watch other videos. And there's quite a lot of other good crochet videos on YouTube, which will show you how to just get the hang of this first bit. And then we can move on together to make the hexagon blanket. It's a lot easier than it looks. Um, and it's really uh, kind of satisfying and beautiful once you've learned the hang of it. Now is the most exciting part of crochet, in my opinion, which is the part where we change colour. So what you want to do is pull up with your hook so you get a nice big loop. Grab yourself some scissors. I have some really lovely unicorn scissors somewhere, but I can't find them. Um, I think I left them at my uni accommodation, so I'm having to use these ones. Um, but shout out to my boyfriend's parents who bought me the beautiful unicorn scissors, which I absolutely love. Chopping that off and then you are, it feels wrong, but trust me, you are pulling the end of that out. So that is your central circle. And now, if you're anything like me, you want to change colour. If you don't want to change colour, you don't need to do this. You can leave it attached um, and then carry on. The best thing to do if you're learning to crochet is not to change colour. Um, it's easier and smoother to not change colour when you're first learning. But if what you want to do is go start to finish and make this blanket, you 100% can. You just need to follow exactly what I'm telling you. I'm going to be really specific about what you do to make it work and look beautiful. So now you need to grab your next colour. I'm using this one, which is, uh, I think it's the colour Emperor from Stylecraft Special DK. I'm using a nice contrasting colour so you can really see what we're doing. Make sure that your circle is the right way up. And if you turn it over, the angle of it slightly cups away from you. So these middle bits are going away from you and this all looks way more curly. If you turn it that way, that is the right way. It doesn't make a massive difference at the end of the day, but it's just a little touch that will help to keep everything looking neat. So make sure when you attach and when you do your next layer, you keep your crochet face up. You don't want it 
face down and attach your wool over here. You want it face up. To attach your next colour, what you've got to do is find the gap between one of the prongs that you've just made. Now, what I do is when I tie the new colour on, I, I take the end of the colour I've just cut, I lay it along the length of my circle and I will tie that down when I attach my next colour just to give it an extra layer of security. It's up to you if you want to do that. If you want to ignore that completely, just ignore that part and do the next bit. But this is what you want to do to attach your colour. So you can either lay that down and do what I'm about to do, or you can ignore that bit and do what I'm about to do. And it will work fine both ways. It's just it helps to keep it a bit neater if you do do it my way. So this is my way. Lay that colour along there. Between each of the stitches that we've just made, there is a little gap. So these are our 12 spikes and between each one, there is a little gap. And what you wanna do is pick a little gap. I go for the gap that is next to the colour that I just cut off. So I'll push my crochet hook into one of these gaps and because that's where I cut my colour I'm going to go one stitch over and push it through there and then I'm going to grab my wool and pull it through and this is my new colour so you can see here that's just hanging around and that's going to get tied down I literally just tie that wool with the bit that I've just come off just hung loosely there I tie it on like that and then you can ignore those two pink tails. They will get sewn in later. The yarn that you've just tied on is this yarn here. This is what you're working with. Everything else, that's the bit that's attached to the ball. Everything else is irrelevant. So grab all that wool. Don't cut it off because you need it to sew in, but it's not actually helping you with the crochet. So just hold it to the side. You don't need it. So I'm going to slip my hook through the hole where my wool is tied and grab onto the wool. And then I'm going to chain three. So yarn over the hook, pull through one yarn over the hook, pull through two, yarn over the hook, pull through three. And that is going to act as the first of our 24 double crochets which we're making in this row. So we're going to make one, uh, one chain three and 23 double crochets. And we're going to do two of each of those double crochets into each of the gaps between the previous double crochets that we made in that last round. You've got your first chain three, now we need to do a double crochet back into the same hole. So we're gonna yarn over the hook, go through that, that same hole that we've just been through, grab the yarn like that, yarn over the hook again, pull through the first two stitches, yarn over the hook again and pull through the last two stitches. So you've got two. Between each of these two uh, double sets of double crochets, we need to do a chain one. So you've done two, now you're gonna chain one. So yarn over the hook, pull that back through like that, and that's a chain one. That just helps to keep it nice and loose and give you some uh, room for the blanket to kind of wobble around. If you don't do that, it's a little bit too tight and the more layers you add, the tighter it will get. So you've got to keep that, so the chain one between. Now we're gonna do the next one. So you can see that's the double crochet from the previous row. So we've got a little gap there. We're gonna do two double crochets into that gap. So yarn over the hook, push down into that gap, yarn over the hook again and pull that yarn back through. Yarn over again, pull through two. Yarn over again, pull through two. And there's one, now we're gonna do another one. Yarn over the hook, back into that same hole. Grab the yarn, yarn over the hook again, pull through two, and yarn over again and pull through two. Perfect, and now we're gonna chain one. So yarn over the hook and pull through one. And there we go. So that's how it's gonna look. We're gonna do that in every single gap. The idea is at the end, we will have 12 of these little prongs, um, or there'll be 24 stitches in total, one chain three and one double crochet, and then two double crochets into each of that hole. What we're making now is this pink part. So we've made the central circle, which is this circle here, and now we're doing each of these, and each of them is two double crochets bunched together with a chain one in between. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you start to get to the end and you have to crochet between the gaps um, that's between a stitch and a chain three. So it can start to look a little bit difficult to tell what's what. So this here is our chain three and then we've got other stitches either side of it. But because we did the chain three and then we attached later, that double crochet is a bit thicker than the chain three. So it's hard to sometimes see that gap. 
what you've got to do is make sure that you're doing the right number. So there should be 12 in total. So you want to make sure that you've got 12 gaps. And when you finish, you've got 12 prongs of two. So we yarn over the hook, push between those two stitches, grab the wool, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, pull through two, and chain one. And there we have our second layer all done. So it looks nice and cute. Cool, so now you've finished that stitch, we just want to attach the top of the chain three. So you've got your little V there, and you just want to attach it like that. So we're all attached and ready to go. So now you're going to pull your crochet hook up so you get a nice big loop, and then you're going to just chop that loop like that. We're going to tie our third colour on now. So in this round, like I said, it's way easier to find your gaps because it's just between each two. You can see the gaps a lot easier. So we'll pop the needle, we'll pop the hook, sorry, through the hole and we'll grab that next colour. And we will pull that colour through the gap and tie it on. I always tie the colour on next to where I cut the previous colour off, just so that you can see like that. Now we're gonna do exactly what we just did in the previous round, except that instead of two double crochets in each gap, we're gonna do three. So we will pop the hook through the hole, grab the wool, yarn over the hook and chain three. So this is chain one, chain two, chain three. And now we're gonna do another two double crochets into that same hole. So we can ignore all that wool that's back there, push it to the side, we'll deal with that later. So yarn over the hook, pop the hook through the hole, grab that yarn and pull it through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the final two loops. And there's two. We're gonna do one more because we need three. Now we've got three. And now we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do the same thing into every single Gap. So it's pretty much what we've just done, so I'm going to do it without you and I'll be back in just a sec. So I've got one more set of three to do, we're going to do them into there, so there's one two, three, and then we're going to attach that in the same way that we've attached all of them, which is into the top of the two stitches on the left. So we've got those two stitches there, yarn over, pull through, pull through again, and there we have it. Now that these three rounds are finished, we have loads and loads of ends that we need to tie in. The more times you change colour, the more ends you have. I'm going to demonstrate with one of them and then you'll know how to do it for the rest. So grab your darning needle and you want to turn your work over. So this is the front because there's no ends on it. This is the back and this is where all your ends are. I'm going to demonstrate with this turquoise one. So what you want to do is thread the needle and then if you look at the work, you can see this turquoisey colour needs to be sewn in to another turquoisey colour. So I'm going to feed it along underneath the back of these bits. So you're basically just kind of stabbing it around until it's it's hidden. So I'm threading it through there um, and I'm just going to pull it out. This is not a specific art. You can sew your ends in however you like as long as it's keeping the work together. So now I have this and what I'm going to do is just continue to sew this end all around this row. So if you see from the front, I'm basically threading it behind here. So we do it like that and I'll pop it up there. Now you can see the end is getting nice and tight and what you do is you sew one direction for a way and then you turn it around and sew back the other way. Like that. Grab your scissors and you can just chop the end close to the tip. Leave a tiny little bit which will stick out but you won't be able to tell. So if you do that for all of your ends and then they'll be nice and tucked in. My ends are all done and now it's time to do 
the next round. When it comes to choosing colours, it's actually completely up to you. I'm now going to go back to this pink just to give a little bit of symmetry to the piece. It's completely up to you what colours you decide to go for. If you've got to this stage, I'm pretty sure you've got quite a good understanding of how these stitches work. So I'm going to move a little bit faster, but I'm still going to give you all your instructions. So I'm going to make a chain three, the same way we always do. We have our chain three, and now we're going to do an additional two doubles to make a total of three along here. The first one you do, you just do your, th your uh, chain three and your two doubles, and then you're going to chain one. And then the next one, we're going to do something different. So in this one, we're going to do three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets into the same hole so you're going to be making effectively what's going to look like a corner so i'll show you that now so here's one double crochet two double crochet and three double crochet and now what we're trying to make here is a corner so we're going to chain two so there's chain one and chain two and then we're going to do another three into the same hole. So you have a chain three, two double crochets and a chain one. Then you have three double crochets, a chain two and then three double crochets into the same hole. Now you finish that, we are going to just chain another one. And you chain that one in between each section. So I've worked into this hole and then I've chained one. I've worked into this hole and then I've chained one. And between everything you do, you're going to chain one. So I finished that corner. I've chained my one. And now I'm going to do three double crochets into this hole. Here we go. So every other hole, you're going to do this pattern. So we have three double crochets into this hole. There's two. There's three. Um, so we're copying this, so we've done that. Now we're going to do our chain one, and now we're going to make another corner. So we've chained one, we're going to do three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets into the same hole. Now we've done three, we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to do another three into the same hole. So now those three are done, we've got a little corner, a flat, and then another corner, and then we need another flat. So we're basically going to go corner, flat, corner, flat, corner, flat, all the way around till we have a hexagon. So you can kind of see it's starting to take that hexagony type shape. So there's a corner, there's a corner, and we've made another corner there. So when you finish that corner, you always need to chain one, and then we need to do another three into the next hole. I'm at the point now where it's time to do my final double into this hole. And there's my final double. And then to connect these up, I'm just going to chain one like I've done between every single other one. And I'm going to connect them the same way I've done that before. So you can see the little V at the top of that previous chain. And I'm aiming to get it in there. And yarn over, pull back through, pull back through. Our hexagon is almost done. What we need to do is put one more layer onto it. And then it will be ready to be the central hexagon or the first hexagon of your blanket. What you do is when you make the first hexagon, you do all of the layers so that you have a completed hexagon. And then when you attach another hexagon to it, you make all of the layers apart from the last one. When you make the next hexagon is you make all of these layers, but you don't make the final layer. And then when you do make that final layer, you crochet it into the uh, final layer of this hexagon. For this final layer, I'm going with this pretty color. It's called, uh, what's it called? I think it's called Wisteria. It's from uh, Stylecraft Special DK. It's the same brand I've used for this whole video. So let's get it done. Also, this hexagon looks a little bit wonky because between me and it, I have a camera and a ring light. So I can't actually uh, see it too well. So if it's come out a bit wobbly, that's why. So we're gonna head for one of the little gaps. We're gonna go for one that is after a corner so there's your corner we're going to go for this gap in here so we'll tie our wool in we're going to start by chaining our three there's one two and three there's our chain three and now we're going to do another two double crochets into this hole there's three now we're going to chain one and the difference is because we're adding a layer onto this instead of making the corner here we're going to make the corner in the actual corner so we're just going to do three doubles into here chain one three doubles into here chain one and then in here we will do another round of the corner so each corner goes into another corner you can see that here we've done three do chain one now we're going to make another corner into here so it's going to be three doubles chain two three doubles so now I've done my corner, I'm just going to do chain one, which I've just done, and then I'm going to do three doubles into here, chain one, three doubles onto here, chain one, and then another corner into 
there, which is three doubles, chain two, and then three doubles into the same hole. And I'm gonna do that all the way around until I meet you back here. We finished this hexagon off. We've got all five layers and we're ready to go. So this is gonna be the central hexagon for um, the whole blanket, basically. The beauty of this blanket is that as you go, you can connect your hexagons. You don't have to have them all pre-made as before you start. We'll pop that hexagon there, that one's all done with. In order to attach the next hexagon, what you need is another hexagon, which you've already made, which you make the same way that you made this one, but you don't put that final layer on. You just do one, two, three, four layers. So you choose which color you want to attach to your hexagon with. So in this one, I'm gonna use a green to attach. It's this one here, it's called Lime, I think, from Stylecraft and I'm gonna crochet around this hexagon, leaving just one edge free. And when I get to that corner, I will attach onto here. Once that corner's all done, we're gonna chain one. And then we're just gonna carry on with that exact pattern all the way around the hexagon. Um, but you're not gonna do the final row. So I'm gonna crochet this pattern. So I'm gonna do, I've done my chain one, I'm gonna do three doubles, chain one in there. Then I'm gonna chain one, three doubles in there, chain one three doubles, chain two, three doubles in there, and then chain one, and then three doubles, and do that all the way around until we get back to this final row, which I'm gonna leave empty, and that is where I'm gonna attach, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So I finished off on that green layer, um, and what I'm just gonna say now quickly is that when you have your hexagons kind of made, but they're not attached to anything, they can look a little bit blimby or a little bit kind of funny on the edges. They're not quite straight, they're not quite perfect. But what happens is as soon as you attach in other hexagons to them, suddenly the shape of that hexagon becomes really perfect and really straight. Um, and you can see that here, you've got a nice sharp edge and um, that's the, kind of the beauty of this pattern. So it's frustrating because when they're alone and when you've not done very many, they can look a little bit wobbly, but the more you attach together and the better you get, the more sharp your edges are gonna be. This hexagon is now ready to attach to this hexagon. So what I've done is I've come up to this corner and I have actually done the first stitch on that corner. We've done our corner, our two sets of doubles, we've got one, two, and we've done another set of doubles. Here is the corner where we're going to attach to the corner of this hexagon. So they're going to sit like that. So here, usually you would chain two and then do another three of your doubles into there. Instead of chaining two, what you're going to do is attach into this corner. You're going to do something called a slip stitch. So rather than here chaining two and carrying on, you're going to Take your hook, take the corner of the hexagon you're attaching to, which has got all five of its layers. You're making the fifth layer of this hexagon now. Take your hook, you're gonna pop it through the corner hole of that hexagon that you want to attach to. So you can see back there, it's popped through. You're gonna yarn over. Then you're gonna pull back through the gap. So you have two stitches on your hook like that. And then you're gonna pull this stitch through this stitch like that. That's called a slip stitch. So now, rather than chaining two on your corner, you've actually attached to this hexagon. And then what you're gonna do is do your three doubles like normal into that corner. Now it can be a bit weird to get used to because you've got another hexagon flapping around in front of you, but you will get used to it and I promise it will come out neat. So you finished your, fi your final three doubles for that corner and now it's time to move on to crochet into this hole. Before we do those uh, three doubles into there, we need to attach to here. So rather than chaining one and then going to do your three doubles in here like you normally would, instead you're gonna do a slip stitch into the hole of the other side. So you put your crochet hook through the hole, yarn over the hook, ooh, yarn over the hook, pull it back through, and then you're gonna do your slip stitch, which is to take this bottom stitch over the top stitch like this. And there's your slip stitch. So it all feels a bit wobbly at the moment, but once it starts to really attach, it will be a lot easier. So you've done that slip stitch and now you're gonna do your three doubles like normal into that. So there's your three doubles all done. And now guess what? <laughs> Rather than chaining one, we're gonna do another slip stitch into the next hole. So through, yarn over, pull that back through, Pull that yarn over the yarn on the hook and then we're going to do our three doubles into there. So now we're at this point, we've finished our three doubles in there, we've got our little corner almost ready to attach. We're just going to do our slip stitch into here and then we're going to do three lovely doubles into the corner. Now you can see we've done our three doubles and that's the first three doubles of that final corner. 
And now, rather than doing our chain two, like we usually would if we were adding another layer, we're just gonna pop into the corner here and do our slip stitch. So put the needle in, put the hook in, grab the yarn, pull back through, hook that, that bottom stitch over the top stitch. Now we're finally ready to do our last three doubles into that corner. So you can see it's all attached, it's looking beautiful. Let's do our final three doubles. So, now our corner is made, we've got a nice sharp edge and you can see these two hexagons are attached and they're looking great. And we just need to attach up here like we normally would um, with our yarn. So we're gonna grab our hook, we're gonna hoik into those top two stitches, yarn over, pull back through and pull back through. So there you can see two perfect, beautifully attached hexagons. And what you've got now is two hexagons to attach to. So you can choose the next hexagon you make. When you do the final layer, rather than leaving one side open, or you can if you want, you can leave one side open and then attach here like we've done there. Or you can leave two sides open and you can do the exact same thing we've just done. So you can attach it on both edges like that. So that is the basics of how you make a really brightly coloured, beautiful hexagon blanket. It's actually really easy. Um, and yeah, it looks great. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you make beautiful hexagon blankets. If you do make them, please share them with me. My Instagram and Twitter are both at RachelThePython. Good luck with your crocheting and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.